Seed potato certification has zero tolerance for bacterial wilt caused by Ralstonia solanocerum. The ability to detect latent infection of Ralstonia from stem, tubers, and soil in the laboratory and in the field with adequate sensitivity, reliability, speed, and reasonable cost will not only improve efficiency of the seed certification process, but will also reduce the cost of certification. Sensitive and specific loop-mediated isothermal amplification, LAMP, assays have recently been developed. The CGIAR's International Potato Center, SIP, has validated these innovative approaches to take the testing process from the lab to the field, all while increasing the efficiency and effectiveness of the certification process, lowering testing costs, and assuring seed health. The field deployable LAMP assay is a diagnostic assay that detects Ralstonia from stem, tuber, and soil samples without extensive resources. LAMP assay is a novel nucleic acid amplification method that amplifies DNA with high specificity, efficiency, and rapidity under isothermal conditions. It uses four to six specially designed primers to recognize six to eight distinct regions on the target DNA template with amplification at constant temperature. In this video, we'll take you through the steps on how to use a field deployable lamp assay in Ralstonia Solana Serum Diagnostics. Let's start with the lamp reagents and instrument. The primary tool in your kit is the lamp instrument. There are several lamp instruments available. In this video, we are using the Genie 3 machine. The isothermal master mix allows for fluorescence detection of the product on the genome. It is tolerant to the inhibitors present in the plant tissue and soil particles. The primer mixes are made up of two external primers, the forward outer primer or F3 and the backward outer primer or B3, two internal primers, the forward inner primer FIP and backward inner primer BIP and one to two loop primers, the loop forward primer, FL, and or loop backward primer, BL. Double distilled or type 2 autoclaved water to mix primers. For type 2 water, distilled water is passed through a filter before autoclaving it. This eliminates salts, ions, nucleic acids and enzymes which might interfere with results. Alkaline PEG200 reagent to use as lysing agent for sample maceration. PEG200 captures inhibitors present in the extraction. The alkaline pH denatures nucleases in the extraction which could degrade target nucleic acid in the detection. If you are using soil samples, use sterile distilled water to avoid contaminants. Some additional materials to include in your kit are plant sample plastic maceration bags, tuber cuticle remover, if accessible, for use in sampling potato eyes, coring device for use in removing internal tissues such as vascular rings, fine tip permanent marker to annotate your samples, pipettes with tips of varying volumes. You can use a one microliter inoculation loop as a convenient alternative. 70% ethanol for disinfecting surfaces, 50 milliliter falcon tubes for processing soil and tuber samples. It's important to prepare all your materials prior to going to the field for on-site detection. Charge the batteries of your lamp assay machine. Double check to see if you have all the primers and instruments needed to conduct the lamp assay. If needed, prepare alkaline PEG 200, which is made up of polyethylene glycol 200, potassium hydroxide, and distilled water. It is used as a lysing reagent for all samples tuber, stem, and soil. Use the following formula to prepare the alkaline PEG 200. You can adjust the pH of the alkaline PEG 200 by adding drops of 930 microliters of potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide until the pH reaches around 13.3. The alkaline PEG buffer 
should be stored at room temperature either in a dark bottle or a bottle wrapped in foil to protect it from light. Now let's go through the different steps to run a lamp assay diagnostic test. Set up in a location protected from the wind, which can move aerosols amongst samples and contaminate them. To prepare your tuber samples for maceration, begin by washing or wiping the tuber surface with sterile distilled water followed by 70% ethanol. Dispense 2 ml of alkaline PEG reagent to labeled plastic sample maceration bags. Treat cuticle remover or blade being used with 70% ethanol to eliminate DNA contamination. Cut out small portion of the tuber at the stolon end to expose vascular ring. Remove the vascular ring with a sterile coring device or blade and transfer it to the respective labeled maceration bag. If you are conducting a seed lot test for latent infection, you can use a coring device attached to falcon tubes with an extraction buffer to collect composite tuber samples. Manually crush the sample and let it stand for 15 minutes before using it as a template for lamp reaction. Wash surface of your stem and wipe with 70% ethanol. Cut a stem fragment of approximately 2 cm. For potato stem samples like the alkaline PEG reagent should be at least 10 times the volume of the stem fragment. With that in mind, dispense 2 ml of alkaline PEG reagent into a labeled plastic sample maceration bag with your stem sample. Add stem sample to maceration bag and manually crush it. Let sample stand for 15 minutes before using it as a template for lamp reaction. When preparing soil samples, make sure to mix and sieve the sample well. You might miss an even distribution of bacteria in the soil if it's not mixed well, while too much debris will interfere with downstream processing if the sample is not properly sieved. Place 5 grams of the representative soil sample and 45 milliliters of sterile distilled water into a 50 milliliter falcon tube. Use a phosphate buffer if enrichment is needed to increase the number of bacteria in the solution, 24 to 48 hours. Mix the sample well by gently shaking manually. Let the soil distilled water mixture sit for 10 to 15 minutes. When it's expected that the sample will show a high Ralstonia infestation, Mix 10 microliters of the soil suspension in 90 microliters of alkaline PEG reagent and let it sit for 15 minutes and then use directly in the lamp reaction. If low Ralstonia infestation is expected, enrich in SMSA media without agar. Different primers are required for different diagnostic procedures. Custom oligonucleotides are usually packaged laflized with the amount of TE buffer or sterile distilled water needed to make the 100 micromolar stock solution printed on the oligo tube. Upon receiving the oligos, spin the tubes briefly before opening. Add the stated amount of TE buffer or sterile distilled water to resuspend. TE buffer should be used for long-term storage. Mix by pipetting or vortex and store at minus 20 degrees Celsius until required. Prepare 100 microliters of 10x primers for use as working stock. You can use this equation for calculations. Do not store oligonucleotides in water at 4 degrees Celsius as they may degrade at this temperature during long-term storage. 
it is better to store at minus 20 degrees Celsius in TE buffered water which depletes the availability of positive ions that are required for enzymatic degradation of DNA. Remember to label the optogen strip to help keep your samples organized. Place the eight strip wells on the holding block with the leads open in the opposite direction. Align the numbers 1 through 8 or A through H from left to right on the holding block. To prepare the reaction master mix for a lamp assay, pipette and dispense 22.5 microliters into each of the eight strip wells. Add 2.5 microliters of the extract or a template for the tuber, stem or soil extract lies in the alkaline PEG200 reagent to the respective well. The positive control template should be added last. Reserve the seventh well for positive control and the eighth well for no target control. Close the strips starting with the no target control and finishing with the positive control to avoid contaminations of any possible spills while closing. Set your lamp program to a temperature of 65 degrees Celsius for 45 minutes amplification and 98 to 80 degrees Celsius annealed temperature with ramp rate of 0.05 degrees Celsius per second. If working in the lab, the alkaline PEG step can be avoided by using heat in lysing. In this case, the Gini instrument is preheated at 95 degrees Celsius for five minutes. Now, we'll share the steps to run a lamp assay on the Gini 2 and Gini 3 machines. Tap on the OptiGini screen. Tap on Start. Tap on Lamp and Anneal.prof to write your own program as follows. Tap on the check icon at the top right corner. Select either of the A for the left or B for the heating block if using the Gini 2 instrument. Tap on the profile graph and set the amplification temperature at 65 degrees Celsius for lamp 1 or 60 degrees Celsius for lamp 2 but leave the annealed temperature at the default setting. Or tap on RS EGL. Tap the play button to start the reaction. The fluorescent signal should have a typical S-shaped sigmoid curve as the fluorescence will first increase slowly, then exponentially, and then slowly again, which plots a curve that resembles an S. The annual derivative should be about 86.7 degrees Celsius from alkaline PEG extraction and 89.6 degrees Celsius from boiled extract. Alkaline PEG is preferred in field conditions since it lowers the melting temperature, which is favorable because the Gini machine is battery operated. If this doesn't happen, you might want to repeat the test and run a complementary test as this could be an indication that something else might have been amplified. If there is an amplification at any time while the anneal derivative is at the right temperature, this test should be considered positive. The time to positivity may indicate the concentration of the bacteria. The faster the amplification, the more bacteria present. Caution! The call for positivity can be very tricky and at times a false positive call can be made. This can occur in cases one is using the lamp to assay as cross-reaction with some strains of pectobacteria have been observed. If this occurs, a confirmatory test can be done using LAMP1 assay, which is a potato strains specific assay. Also check on the no target template and the positive control templates to ensure no cross-contamination occurred. Certified seed is a surefire way to help bolster potato production across sub-Saharan Africa. The LAMP assay is a versatile, cost-effective tool that brings the power of diagnostics right to the settings where it is needed most. It can be used at ports of entry and in farmer fields, 
helping to rapidly diagnose latent infection of bacterial wilt and help mitigate its devastating spread. This low-cost approach is an essential tool in strengthening the potato seed system and making the certification process for seed potato more widely accessible. <music>